Oh hey, it's Wes. And I finally just got in the Godox V1 Flash. And as you're probably aware, everyone wants to know how this flash compares to the V860 Mark II. Pretty soon I'll be coming out with a full review of the V1, but I haven't put it through all its paces yet, and that's why we're here today. Put it through a pace or two. So now it's time for a good old-fashioned torture test. We've got these flashes hooked up to an X-Pro controller, and they are set to one half power. And at one half power, they're going to fire every four seconds with this remote trigger. I don't have to do anything. It's not plugged into a camera. We're going to time it and see which one of these slows down, gives up, overheats first, if at all. Right now in this space, it's about 23 degrees Celsius. You can make the conversion yourself, just uh, for a frame of reference of how fast things might overheat. So let's press play on this and I'm gonna play some Harry Potter while we're waiting to see what happens. Yep, they're both firing all right. Oh boy. As it turns out, there are no Harry Potter foundables anywhere near my house. We are at nine minutes and 17 seconds. As you can see, the control layout on the new Godox V1 is a little bit different from the V860 Mark II. Although I was hoping for improvements, there is a little bit of a learning curve. Still getting used to the way this is controlled. I'll be taking it to my next wedding this weekend and seeing how it fares at the reception. Also, you can see that the LED on the back of the flash is now bicolored. So when it's charging, it turns red. When it's ready, it turns green. Also, as you can see, it turns green pretty quickly. She gets there fast. Another question a lot of people have is, how much power output does the V1 have compared to the V860 Mark II? It's pretty much the same. Lots of people have tested this, trying to do things that other people haven't. Hopefully this doesn't melt down, and I would rather it make it all the way to a wedding so that I can actually test it, but if it melts down now, I probably don't want to take it to a wedding. Let's keep her going. Seven minutes and 51 seconds to go. If you remember any of my previous torture test videos, if a flash makes it through this first 10 minute round, we go to a bonus round of one to one full power to see how long that takes to overheat. And it will probably overheat, except I don't think the 8600 did. You'll have to check the link for yourself, but that one did pretty solid. While we wait, another interesting thing I noticed about the V1 is that when you rotate the head, you can go 180 degrees this way, or you can go not quite 180 degrees this way. That's interesting. I'm not gonna try to force it in case it's just mine, but it appears to be the way it's designed. Rotation mechanism itself feels fantastic. It's so smooth, but also solid. I mean, there was nothing wrong with my old one either though. That feels great too. There is no bounce card on this flash, but I don't usually use the bounce card at all. I just bounce it off the ceiling or off the wall or something. I find that the little glint caused by the bounce card is just too small to actually look nice at all. Another fun difference, instead of having the slow rotation lock at the bottom of this flash, you have the quick release lock on the bottom of this one. Really looking forward to that, oh boy. I find that uh, the multi-interface shoe is sometimes a little bit touchy if you don't have the flash locked down, so it's nice to be able to lock that down a little bit faster. On the side, you can see the location of our new battery. It's pretty spiffy how it passes straight through the flash. Obviously, I can't take it out now to show you because, well, that would kind of end my test. When this test started, that I forgot to mention, both flashes are fully charged. I fully charged the batteries this morning, but that was a couple hours ago, so there is no residual heat inside the battery or the unit itself, so we can start fresh. We're at four minutes and 45 seconds remaining. The V1 has overheated, as has the V860 Mark II. 
neither of them is firing every time now. That's interesting. I don't believe that happened with the V860 Mark II the last time I tested it. Got a lot of charge light going on here, but not a lot of firing. Oops, skipped that one. That one gone. Kind of taking turns here, but I feel like the V860 Mark II is still firing more frequently than the V1. That's a little bit disappointing. Yep. That's for sure. The V1 has definitely overheated more than the V860 Mark II has. So they're each firing about once every eight seconds now. I'm going to end this. So at this point, about eight minutes in, the V860 Mark II is firing about once every eight seconds. The V1 is firing about once every 12 seconds. That's kind of a shame. Neither of them made it to the bonus round. They're both quite hot. Both of them are showing a reasonable amount of charge left, that being 100%. And I imagine if I were to give them just a few minutes to cool down, they would fire just fine. So that is interesting. Repeating this test in the summer gave me a little different result. I don't remember what time of year it was last time. So there you have it. This entirely unscientific test has shown that unfortunately the V1 overheated just one flash faster, but more thoroughly than the V860 Mark II did, with the same amount of power output. Perhaps there's just too much going on in this head here, and there's too much heat being built up. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I am an electrical technologist though, so I do understand overheating. Anyway, stay tuned, subscribe, stick around. I will be doing a full test of this flash, a full review, to see if there's any more quirks or wonderful features that pop up on this flash that I haven't noticed yet. So, until next time, ah, go take some photos.